Hello, Matt here with Linux Academy, and the theme of today's Google Cloud update is all about security. We'll be discussing a new managed hardware encryption service and also binary authorization of containers on this edition of Google Cloud Weekly. Now, for most of us, the default Google managed encryption of cloud resources, it's more than enough. However, some organizations need to provide their own encryption keys in order to meet strict compliance requirements, which they currently can using the existing cloud key management service. Even then though, some organizations have even stricter encryption requirements that also requires specialized hardware known as a hardware security module for this encryption. For these even more extreme requirements, Google has announced a new managed service called simply Cloud HSM. So what is this all about? There is a really strict compliance standard called FIPS 140-2 Level 3, bit of a mouthful, but it basically states that encryption operations must be performed in a specialized physical hardware environment, and the specialized hardware is the hardware security module we just talked about. The newly announced Cloud HSM service supplies these hardware security modules as a managed service that integrates with the existing Cloud Key Management service. With the Cloud HSM service, you can create a wide variety of encryption and decryption keys in a restricted hardware environment. Now, the service just launched in public beta, so go check it out if custom encryption is important to you. Let's now move on to container security. Now, one of the top concerns of both enterprise security and DevOps professionals is whether or not they can truly trust what is running on their production infrastructure, especially when working with containers. Now, for large-scale enterprises that have to manage and deploy hundreds or maybe even thousands of containerized microservices per day, it can be pretty difficult to stop the introduction of malicious code that has either accidentally or purposely slipped into production. This is not a good thing. But fear not. With the newly announced binary authorization feature built into Kubernetes Engine, this just became a whole lot easier. Now, binary authorization seeks to automate the management of large-scale container deployments to keep out the bad stuff. So how exactly does this work? Two main points. Binary authorization keeps bad code out by number one, only allowing digitally signed and trusted code into production to begin with. And also number two, it also whitelists known first party images while also blocking unpatched third party software. Binary authorization on Kubernetes engine integrates with existing deployment tools, which is always a big plus. It's built on top of open source software, and it also allows for so-called break glass deployments for emergency fixes when you just don't have the time to go through the whole authorization process. Binary authorization for Kubernetes engine is currently available in public beta, so you can get started right away. Now, if you'd like to know more about the topics we discuss in more detail, we will link to a deeper dive in both subjects in the description for this video, so be sure to go check it out. Also, be sure to subscribe to the Linux Academy YouTube channel for the latest updates on Google Cloud and more. And also join us on Thursdays for a live stream demo on Google Cloud topics of your choosing. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next week.